Hey, at this time, uh, I'd like to introduce the general manager of networking for the Linux Foundation, Arpit Joshapura. Uh, to announce a partnership uh, between OCP and the Linux Foundation that supports our focus on bringing you integrated hardware software solutions in the future. Our Thank you very much. Yeah. Excited about it. All right, guys. Uh, good morning. Cool. I was just wondering if you guys are still like morning sleep or whatever. But here we're really excited that the leader in open hardware. OCP and the leader in open source software, Linux Foundation Networking, are coming together. And it's about time. And we're going to bring the best of both worlds and a collaborative effort to provide an end to end stack from a hardware and a software perspective, provide the testing, the integration. And another area that is very critical that sits on the boundary of hardware and software is the operating systems. And we're going to have this framework of partnership and collaboration that allows us to have a harmonization discussion across the communities to bring the best of the solutions to the end users like you. So let me, let me focus on, on, on the details of it. But before I do that, let me give you an overview of the software. Um, software stacks and, and what's happening in the software. Now, when I was running uh, hardware and ASIC engineering, we always dreamt of writing or, or doing hardware and, and ASIC design like the software folks. You know, throw it away, do it, modular API, things like that. Now I'm in software. We give examples of hardware and field replaceable units, and can I write software so that APIs and models and things interoperate? So it's about time that the two things come together. Um, so let me start off by a quick introduction of Linux Foundation. Linux Foundation is more than Linux. I think you might know that. But we focus on major areas. On the left, you have obviously the embedded platforms like Linux and Node.js and things like that. We have areas like blockchain, Hyperledger, the fastest growing project. In the cloud areas, we got Kubernetes, right, which is one of the largest, uh, if not the largest, uh, cloud orchestration uh, open source project. And then, of course, on the embedded side, uh, several of the uh, verticals have started doing project. And the one that I'm responsible for is on the right-hand side, which is uh, a set of projects under open source networking. And I will give you the details of what each of these acronyms mean in a very, very uh, short time. Okay? For those of you who have not been exposed to the software aspects of open source networking specifically, I want to say that for the last 137 years, telecom and networking was proprietary. And in just the last five years, we have started disaggregating the components. Open source projects started coming out. And in the last two years, we have seen open source projects go and become production ready. Where we are heading now is not just open source components, but the open source components coupled with each other as well as ecosystems around it, so more like a solution. And that's kind of where the market is heading, and that's where uh, you know, we are moving forward. And, and so three things helped with this major trend. On the left-hand side, you see that in the last 137 years or whatever, we just had a very, very proprietary, hard-coded sort of box, black box, let's call it, uh, which had the hardware, the software, the firmware, and all the features in one stack. Three things happened. Disaggregation happened, meaning I could buy hardware from software. And, and for, the, for the compute and the server folks, you, you will be wondering, what's he saying, right? You've done that 20 years ago from mainframes. Networking is following. So we're just probably 10 years behind you, but we'll probably get ahead. Just, just a joke. No. Um, the second thing was um, software-defined happened. So software-defined is really around separating the control or the brains of where should the traffic go from 
the actual traffic or the payload. And it sounds trivial, but it's extremely important to understand that SDN has been a major disruptor in the last 10 years. And that allowed for every function that had purpose-built hardware in the network to run as a virtual function on a server. Okay? And, and so lots of projects came along, uh, one shown on the right, that made it like a horizontal um, layer of the stack. Okay? And to make it even more complex, 5G and IoT are right around the corner and look at the volumes that are showing up. Data volume, data rates, devices, latencies, bandwidth. And the goal of an end user is to connect the services, whether it's cloud services, residential, enterprise services, et cetera, to the infrastructure below where you know, we come in. And today, what's happened is it's very fragmented and disjointed tooling and it's manual, right? That's the software piece which is going through major innovation and major disruption. And so what we are claiming is that it's mandatory to automate these networks before 5G and IoT hits the network, okay? And so that's where what Linux Foundation Networking has been doing is, is launching a series of projects that allow for the network automation at the software layer. It connects with the cloud automation and things like Kubernetes. It connects with IoT automation and the edgex type devices. But the reality is we need to now not just connect the software portions of it, but also allow for hardware collaboration. And that's where OCP comes in. Okay? Now, a quick word on LF. Uh, we host majority of the open source networking projects, almost nine out of the 10 top projects. All the vendors are active. Uh, the participation of end users, specifically when it comes to the carrier or the telco segment, is you know we're almost at 60, 65 percent of the subscribers represented. And the innovation that has been going on is 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 almost you know 2,000 people uh, you know constantly through the community like like OCP. So we're really excited about about uh, open source networking. But for those of you who have not seen the dark side or we say the light side, which is the software side. Here's the stack. Um, and I think most of you have, have done this uh, uh, before, right? Where if you are in hardware, software is just a small cloud. If you're in software, hardware is just a box at the bottom. That's what it is. Sorry. Uh, so OCP and TIP. And, and th by the way, this is a landscape of all open source communities in networking that are relevant to the future of where we're going. And so you can see that these are open source hardware communities. On top, you have data plane acceleration projects that take the um, hardware and, and, and get it ready for the fast forwarding that we need in, in the software world. And then you get onto the operating systems. Multiple of these operating systems uh, have been uh, flourishing right now. Um, and then you get the control, uh, the controllers, and then all the way up the stack into network analytics, AI, IoT. And there's a huge, huge uh, momentum in the top layer of the stack as uh, you know, projects like you know, Acumos and ONAP and, and things like that are, are really, really fostering at the, at the Linux Foundation. And we will have some you know, major announcement at, at uh, Open Networking Summit next week. So one level of detail on the partnership and what we are uh, focusing on. Um, we get you the best of open source hardware and, and software, right? So the first is to allow our communities to collaborate. And that means hardware vendors, silicon vendors, OEM manufacturers, softwares, SIs, and users. We all will be participating in the projects, sharing ideas, coming up with common innovation that allows, you know, if, if, if there are requirements, if there's uh, an area that is not done well, we can obviously look at that across our communities, right? So that's kind of the biggest value of this uh, announcement that, you know, Rocky and, and, and we just did. Uh, the second is uh, really around testing. You know, I heard from you know uh, Bill and Rocky and others that we have uh, we have to 
provide a set of testing that is not just hardware testing and not just software testing, but a collaboration across that. So we have a project called OPNFE in the Linux Foundation as part of Linux Foundation Networking, where uh, you know we have included and, and uh, integrated the OCP hardware uh, testing. And that includes anything from the uh, core of the network to the edge, to the central office, et cetera. And, and uh, it's very important to make sure that the testing happens from both a hardware and a software perspective, right, in the open community. And then the most important thing that is more forward-looking uh, that we are very, very excited is on what I call easy re-aggregation. For those of us who have been in this space, you know, we've heard about white boxes and disaggregation and hardware from software and uh, commodity silicon and APIs and SDKs and all these terms at the end of the day you know, mean that you have a choice. You have a choice of silicon, you have the choice of hardware, you have the choice of operating systems, and you have a choice of software. That choice will be based on the end user and the end user use cases. And one of the areas that we are focusing on very heavily uh, between OCP and the Linux Foundation is on the network OS. So some of you may have uh, uh, read about uh, a project called DNOS, which is uh, a network operating system. It's a full stack. Uh, OS for white boxes that uh, the seed code, some of the most of the seed code came from AT&T. So we're going to host that. Uh, we're working closely with the Sonic team uh, on Psi and specifically, you know, extending that abstraction layer across multiple um, multiple OSs. OPX is the open switch uh, OS that has components that kind of can be harmonized. Uh, Stratum was a new. Um, uh, uh, new OS, that mo mostly a thin layer at the forwarding layer that was just announced based on sort of P4 and some of the uh, programmable forwarding planes. And of course, uh, FRR is kind of the control plane, you know, uh, BGP type free range routing that we host. So the good news is, as these projects come along, Linux Foundation is leading the initiative to pre harmonize and get these things out in the community so that we don't have to go back and look for duplication or look for interoperability or look for interworking. Okay? So stay tuned for some of these announcements at the Open Networking Summit next week. And with that said, if you want to learn more, uh, there's a booth. Uh, we have some experts here that will uh, go through some of the demos. And these are very interesting demos. You know, VNFs, for those of you who are in pure hardware, are virtual network functions. These are services that are just virtualized on an x86 or, or some sort of a hardware. When you, when you upgrade, downgrade, change it, it's, you don't need downtime. I mean, that's a reality. And so we're showing that demonstration. There are a couple of other sessions uh, and roundtables that we talk about compliance, interoperability, and all. And I think the most important thing I want to leave you guys with as, as, a, as a token of appreciation for the partnership is uh, you know, a discount code for ONS. So ONS is next week. Um, and you know, before the code and, and, and the conference gets sold out, um, for the next two days, this code is for you. And uh, it will knock off quite a bit of, of the pricing. So I just wanted to uh, give that to you. And with that, I just wanted to thank you for participating and helping us participate in the OCP community. And we're looking forward to working with all, all of you, and specifically the members of the community that are you know, going both across hardware and software. So thank you very much.